when you're talking about something that's the size of a small truck, we have to be so careful here. Uh, so we anesthetize the animal and then we need to do some contraceptive work in it. I've got one shot at this. If something goes wrong, he could turn and charge and from that distance, a dart ain't gonna stop him. He's not happy. Chris, so there's elephants running up your hand. Okay. Sorry guys, back on the vehicle please. It kind of feels like I'm clearing out the clinic. Chris needs plenty of supplies because he's off to a remote location to visit one very special patient. Hey, Neil. Yeah? You might want to order in a few more sedatives. We're uh, now officially all out. Well, I only just order them a few days. There should be plenty here. Yeah, well, I'm treating something big. Big? Big. Right, OK. Um, and I don't think I'm around in the books for the next few days. Um, where are you going? Um, South Africa. What, now? Yep. Oh. Um, I'll see you later. All right then, bye. Thanks, mate. Every now and then you get a call to go and help an animal that you just can't refuse, and this is definitely one of those. Chris has travelled to the vast Shamwari Game Reserve on the southern coast of South Africa. He's been invited to be part of an important elephant conservation program. We would not believe it, but we're going to make an elephant asleep. It's all happening now. Chris is joining doctors Johan Eubert and John O'Brien, and the bull elephant they're searching for today is young, fertile and dangerous. We, uh, we, we need to dart him, basically, with a dart gun. Uh, so we anesthetize the animal, and then we need to do some contraceptive work in it. Is it still up here? Yeah, but it's out in the open. You see, when, you dart, when, when we dart, you know, what we really got to consider is it can take 10, 15 minutes for the animal to go down. Sure. They can also move a long way in that period yeah. of time. So we don't want to do it where it's right, even in the open, but with thicker all around, you yeah. know? You can safely assume that this elephant isn't going to want to have its contraception or have a blood sample taken. And when you're talking about something that's the size of a small truck that can charge you, we have to be so careful here. Is that him? Okay, this is, this is him, Chris. Wow. Okay. This is a bull we're looking for. Yeah. You'll see he's got a nice big tear in the top of the right ear. This 20-year-old male has been singled out for contraception. There's no doubt that the poaching and killing of elephants has been a huge problem throughout Africa. But in recent years, certain pockets have found their numbers have gone through the roof. Now they're left with two options. You either kill the elephants or use contraception. Because if those numbers stay the same, it's just too damaging on the environment. All right, now you see he's on the bank of the river yep. and he's gonna follow a road that runs parallel to the river. My recommendation is we let him walk yep. to get into the open area on the other side. Sure. And we dart him there. Yeah. So the risk is that if we do it now, that river could be where he heads. Absolutely. If he had to get drowsy and, and actually go down to the river and fall in, he'll, he'll drown. It's crucial the team gets close enough to dart the elephant so the contraceptive can be administered. But they don't want to spook him. As with anything, humans, animals, there's this uh, comfort zone. Mm. If I had to go too close to him, yeah. he would feel that and he'd get grumpy. He'd either run off or he'll turn around and say to us, back off, you know? All of a sudden, the elephant starts heading away from the river, and Chris now urgently needs to get ready to dart him. Okay, Chris, would you like to pressurise and yeah. then load it? Yeah. So the plan is what, just to wait here and see if he heads into an open space there? Yes, and I think once we pressurise, I'll go around so that I'm in the open area itself. Yeah. There are a couple of challenges here. I mean, first of all, elephants have incredibly tough skin, so you need to be able to penetrate that with a dart but you don't want to use so much force that it actually causes injury to that leg. This you can go to the middle of his backside, eh? Yeah. Okay. Is it a better position now? Yeah, yeah, it's quite nice. It's in the open area. Okay. Um, hopefully it won't run too much once we dart it. Right. I'm gonna go a bit forward just so that we can get a better shot of his shoulder because the wind moves the dart quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. The fact is, I've got one shot at this. If something goes wrong, he could turn and charge and from that distance, a dart ain't gonna stop him.
That was a perfect placement. Yeah. Didn't yeah. like that at all. It looks like it has fired. You agree? Yeah, I think so. Johan's checking. Do you see? Did yeah, it go it's fine. The plunger is down, yeah. so it's fine. Okay. He's not happy. Chris is working alongside the reserve's vets, Dr. Johan Uber and John O'Brien. Now the elephant has been darted, it's a waiting game for the tranquilizer to take effect. He seems a little bit agitated too. You can see he's spinning around and, and shaking his head and flapping his ears. Even though it was only two millions of, of anaesthetic, you can see just how powerful it is. There he goes. The bull is finally down, but has fallen awkwardly. And now he's in grave danger. Because of the big stomach, you know, the what pressure of the in? diaphragm. We need to get them sideways. So essentially right. crushes his own, own lungs. Yeah, yeah. We've got a bit of a problem here. I mean, the way he's sitting like a dog, it's fine for so many other animals, but for an elephant, it means tons and tons of weight are pressing down on his lungs. The fact is we now need to roll him onto his side, otherwise we risk losing him. It will be impossible for Chris and the other two vets to move the four-ton elephant, so reinforcements are called to help. OK, we need you to come in as quick as you can, please. Yeah, I am coming. All right. I think we can get out now and check. Yep. The big bull is in trouble, and suddenly... Chris? Sorry, there's elephants running up behind. Okay. Sorry, guys, back on the vehicle, please. So is the team. Yo, Anya, Anya, stay behind it. Let it go past us, please. The problem we've got right now is that he's sitting in a dangerous position. We need to roll him onto his side. That's where these guys come in. But the problem is that this elephant over here that's circling it and looking quite agitated too. We need to get to that one, but we can't because of that one. It's all happening, huh? The intruder suddenly loses interest. He is going to join up with the herd. Yeah. So he'll go into the bushes. I think we can actually drive a bit closer. Yep. Uh, just so we've got the vehicles there for safety. All right, Bruce, we're going to stop putting him over. Finally, they can get to the tranquilised elephant. Wow, it's incredible. Time is critical. That's the dart there. You can see the plungers right to the top, so he does actually have all of those drugs on board. So that's a comforting sign when you've got this many people around an elephant. It's time to get this elephant on his side, and that means all hands on deck. But the massive beast won't budge. There's only one other choice, bring in the car. It's time to exchange manpower for horsepower. OK, a bit more, Bruce. OK, whoa. Nice and gentle. Well done. It's amazing. He's fully out now. hear the air rushing out of this trunk here. This is how he's going to be breathing right now. So just so he can breathe and keep him stable, we just need to keep that nice and straight. All right, so blood samples first. Yes, yeah, just flap it completely over. There we are. Oh, big... <laughs> so what we do is we close the eye yeah. and you've got quite a nice vein to take blood from, eh? With the elephant stable, it's time to perform some blood tests. If I miss that, there are serious <laughs> problems, aren't there? The whole point of this blood test is to measure his testosterone levels. That's the hormone we're trying to suppress, so we need to know its levels before he has the contraception. So it's almost for two reasons why we're doing this. It's the one that we want to suppress testosterone for the behaviour, and the other is almost like trials that we do to see if this is a way of contraception uh, that we can use. If trials are successful, more bull elephants will be given contraception. This will help control herd numbers in parts of South Africa where they simply can't sustain so many elephants. He's a bad boy. He's actually quite a bad boy, quite a naughty one, yeah. This we might... were actually quite fortunate to get him in the open like this. Yeah. This might just pull him back into line. <laughs> With the blood testosterone level determined, Chris can work out exactly how much contraceptive vaccine to give this young bull. Right, so... In the elephant world, it's the male that goes in the pill. So he's just going to get five mils of this drug here. The whole point of this injection is to essentially stop any of that alpha male aggressive or dominant behaviour.
but also importantly, it's going to stop him from breeding. Okay. Now that all our work here is done, it's time to wake him up with a reversal agent. Now, I've been caught out in Africa before with animals waking up just a little bit quicker than I thought, so we're not going to take any chances here. Okay, thank you. Let's go. It's not going to muck around. Within seconds, his eyes are open. He's waking up quickly, but not quite as quickly as a rhino I treated on my last trip to Africa. Okay, okay. Watch out, watch out. The rhino woke up far quicker than anticipated, and Chris had to make a run for it. Yeah, I'd go. Thank you, I'd go. Luckily, the rhino called off the chase. Oh, I've got some oxygen. He's going to get up, eh? Here we go. He doesn't muck around. There's something majestic and almost spiritual about watching a four-ton elephant rise to his feet and really become the king of the African savannah once more. And then it kind of changes the purity of the moment. He's quite relaxed. So all's well that ends well, eh? Yeah. It's just incredible. It's like nothing happened at all. He's back on his feet and, and ready to go. And... All right. Away he goes. Mate, thank you. That was very special, Johan. Thank you. That was a pleasure. Thank you, mate. Sure, he gave us a few heart palpitations, but to be this close to the biggest of the big five has been a real privilege. But also to be able to help out a species that has been under so much pressure is something I'll never forget. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com and you can do so via the link in the description. Link in the description.